So this is our final part of what do archaeologists draw? Part three, building survey, reports, and digital. First of all, we'll very briefly go over building survey. Building survey is not a specialty of mine. It's very aptly taught by Dav Smith here in the department. He has, runs um, part of an excellent master's course on it, and I definitely recommend it if you are interested in such things. This is an illustration that was produced by a very experienced archaeologist named Tiz Howard for the Gloucester Cathedral, Lady Chapel. And in this, he's able to draw all of the elevations of this particular, particular chapel. And then he was able to show which part um, came first, and so phasing the chapel, but also which um, different stones they used within the chapel as well. And so you also do report figures, infograms, and other things like that. And so I like to show this report figure um, to demonstrate that to even the archaeologists that are much more interested in so-called the hard sciences, bioarchaeology, it is absolutely critical that you learn how to make figures for your, um, your articles because if you publish in a place like science or like nature, the figure must carry its own weight in interpretation because you have a very, very limited word count. And so it's important to make the absolute most of your figures. This is another figure that was produced of the star car pendant. Um, and so it shows the different phases of um, drawing on a very small, as you see from the scale, pendant. And so you see the first lines that were, were created, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth, tenth, eleventh, and then you, you swear eventually. And the meaning of this has been debated, but it was really useful to actually see how the drawing had evolved over time. This is an infographic produced by Stuart Henderson, who was an undergraduate and then a master's by research here. And he was able to translate his dissertation research into a series of really engaging infographics about animal domestication and extinction events that you can see right there. And he ended up getting a very, very high mark on his um, dissertation. Um, obviously, would love to attribute it to these infographics in particular. But also, um, we can discuss digital illustration as well. And as I mentioned in the very first part of this lecture, digital illustration is still evolving and we still don't really understand exactly what it is doing to our understanding of, the, of archaeological remains. But especially as the lecturer in digital archaeology and heritage, um, I think it would be remiss not to mention it. Um, and so in one of the articles that was assigned for today um, by me and Holly Wright in the Archaeology Data Service, we mentioned that um, as drawings have persisted since the beginning of archaeological recording, remained important after the introduction of photography, is characterized as an essential mode of communication and our knowledge production within archaeology and features prominently within abductive reasoning during initial archaeological investigation, a complete abdication to digital recording should be a matter of intense consideration. And so by this we're saying we really need to understand what we're doing with illustration within archaeology before we can fully go to, say, photogrammetry. And as we mentioned in the first lecture, we have figured out some of this since this publication. Um, and some of this was experimenting done as part of the Aid Memoir project. And as you see, this is a digital illustration. And so this illustrator has taken a photograph of a, an artifact. And you see they're using a tablet to um, digitally draw this, this artifact. This is an example of photogrammetry of that same trench that I used to illustrate um, drawing and photography in the last lecture. And so with these, you can take many, many, many photographs and then stitch them together into a, a photogrammetric model. And we'll be covering those a little bit more in a future lecture, but I wanted you to see what it looks like. 
you can also do really other amazing things within um, using digital tools. This is an example of the Rosetta Stone with Sketchfab. And so if you go and click through to the Sketchfab model, you can see that there are different points that are interpreted for you with a voiceover. And so this is a really good tool for engagement to not only show the stone from many different angles, but then to actively interpret the stone um, through a very accessible fashion. But again, a 3D model is not a substitution for drawing. It is another way of knowing and recording the archaeological deposits and the relative affordances for each method should be fully examined. This is the end of our illustration week. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope that you might be at least a little bit convinced to do a few more drawings as you learn archaeology. Thank you.